Fallout 2 is a game that many older Fallout fans have pegged as not only the best classic Fallout game, but the best game in the entire franchise. And it's easy to see why. It has fun gameplay that expands on what makes the originals good, a great story with a bunch of well-written factions, and talking death claws. So today, because many of you asked for it, we'll be taking a look at Fallout 2 and seeing if all the hoopla around this game is truly justified. So, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, some history. Fallout 1 was a great game, and a lot of people at the time recognized that, because it ended up selling over 500,000 copies, which in today's massive gaming industry doesn't sound like a lot, but back then for a niche PC-only RPG, that was a lot. So Interplay decided to do what I like to call a quick sequel which is basically when you take the first game, keep everything the same, but just make a new world and story. Add in a couple weapons and other random mechanics, and bam, you got a sequel. These were really popular in the 90s, because by working off the first game, you only had to put in like half the work to make the sequel, and then you could cash in on the newly born franchise in half the time. And that's exactly what they did. Fallout 1 released in 1997, while Fallout 2 released in 1998, only a year after, compared to the three and a half years that Fallout 1 took. So, let's boot this sucker up and see what they did in that year. First things first, we create our character. The character creation is the same as Fallout 1, so if you played that beforehand, just pick whatever you want and go. Then you get to witness the beautiful, stunning graphics of this opening cutscene. It's not that long, but the gist is that this is the elder of your tribal village called Arroyo. And the village is dying. Oh no. But guess what? You're the chosen one. So she needs you to find the Garden of Eden creation kit to save the village. And she's saying all this while there's a bong in the background, by the way. And yeah, the premise of this game is basically the same as Fallout 1, but in a tribal setting, and you're getting a Gek instead of a water chip. So at least Bethesda isn't the only one who reuses the same story premises over and over. Then the real game begins, and I'm gonna walk you through how the beginning of the game goes. So, your first task is to get through the Temple of Trials. Okay, I'll stop doing that. The Village Elder wants you to prove yourself in this temple. And yeah, this is the tutorial area. It's filled with ants and scorpions. So first step, you're just going to want to avoid the ants. They aren't hard, but you don't have any weapons except a spear, and you don't really get anything from them either. Instead, run past all the ants, open the first door, use your lockpick skill to open the second door, and then search this random clay pot to find the C4 plastic explosive, yes really, and blow it up to get through the third door. Once you've done that, you'll find one of your fellow tribals blocking the way, saying you have to fight him in unarmed combat as the final test. But you can just say to him, hey, what if one of us gets hurt? And that apparently convinces him to fuck off. Now that you've passed the Temple of Trials, you can talk to the Elder again. And I find it funny that she congratulates you for surviving, even though you literally pussied out of every single challenge that was laid before you. Anyways, she'll tell you your next objective, which is to go to Klamath and find a dude named Vic. So once you get to Klamath, you can either ask around for him, or enter the building that says Vic's on the side of it in Comic Sans. But psych, he's not there. Instead, loot the house and then go over to the bathhouse, yes really, and ask for Vic. And this girl will tell you that Vic is at another settlement called The Den. Before you head over there though, you probably want to go to Trapper Town, another location in Klamath, so you can get geared up and also kill the Rat King. Yeah, there's a Rat King. Now, The Den is awesome. It's my favorite settlement in this game because it's basically a wretched hive of scum and villainy filled to the brim with wasteland degenerates. And speaking of, what do you know? Vic has been enslaved. So, you need $1,000 to get him out. Or, $500 if you're female and you fucked the leader of the Slavers Guild, yes really. The game opens up from this point, and you can get that money in whatever way you want to. You can either work with the Slavers, do other odd jobs, or try to kill them all and rescue Vic yourself. 
I ended up joining a different gang and doing errands for them, which culminated in an epic shootout against a rival gang in a church that's filled with crates of drugs. Are you starting to get what kind of game this is now? Once you get Vic out, you can continue the main story, but I'll leave that to you. Speaking of, as I mentioned before, Fallout 2's story is very similar to Fallout 1, with you being sent out into the waste by your sheltered community to find the item they need. But where it differs from Fallout 1 is that the main story to this game is amazing. I mean, Fallout 1's is already great, but Fallout 2 brings it to a whole nother level. And one of the main reasons for that is this is the game that introduced the Enclave. And unlike the Enclave in Fallout 3, this version of the Enclave is awesome. I don't want to spoil too much, but the big bad in this game is even better than in the first game, and it gets very satisfying to take them down and save your village. But like most Fallouts, where this game really shines is with the side content. One of my favorite places for side quests in this game is New Reno which is even more filled to the brim with drugs and gangs than the den, with there being a fuckload of mobsters, hookers, and casinos everywhere. One of the first things that happens to you there is that if you park your car, because yes, you can get a car in this game. Bethesda, please bring that back. If you park your car, it'll straight up get stolen within the next five minutes, and then you have to do a quest to go track down the thief. This game's quests are great. Fallout 1 was more traditionally post-apocalyptic, whereas Fallout 2 shows the dark side of the wasteland. And while I personally like Fallout 1 better because I think it's a bit more cohesive, I can't deny that Fallout 2's aesthetic is much more interesting than Fallout 1's. And I get why people say it's the better game. Fallout 2 takes everything that was great about the original game and expands upon it. The combat is the same as Fallout 1, but better and with more weapons. There's more locations to explore and quests to do. There's more NPCs to talk to. There's new factions you can do quests for, like the NCR, the Shi, the Hubologists, and the Slavers Guild. And despite the short development time, it's all great stuff. Overall, I highly enjoyed my time with Fallout 2 and I'm definitely going to give it another full playthrough sometime in the near future. And if you enjoyed Fallout 1, you absolutely need to give Fallout 2 a spin. And that's all I have to say about Fallout 2. And if you haven't, go play it. After you play Fallout 1, of course. I'm probably going to do a video on Fallout Tactics next, just to round this series out and make it a nice trilogy which covers all the classic Fallout games. And if you know anything about Fallout Tactics, you know that's gonna be fun. So stay tuned for that. I'm the Logamuffin, subscribe or I'll kick you in the dick, and as always, I'll see you up ahead.